Oh. I am making a stuffed crust pizza. I just rolled some olive oil in there. Peel this smoked mozzarella, very important. You yeah. want to peel it because it has that little skin in the outside. Taking pizza dough, we've right. just rolled it out here and put it over the edge of the pan. The smoked mozzarella that has been squared off, you just roll it in here. Jeezy. Jeezy. You want to take your sauce here and just put a little bit in the center, spread it out like that. The shredded cheese on. Yeah. Next, okay? Shred it. Yeah. Here, Jeff, catch. Oh. Hey. I got beautiful uh, Kalamata olives in there. Red onions, very fine. Salt, a little bit of pepper. We put it on an open flame about four or five really? minutes just to get that little crust started. And just a touch of this on the edge. In an oven, 500 degrees, 20 minutes. Oh! Oh! Pop it out. Wow. And I like to put the basil on at the end. More olive oil. Always. And then when it's warm, ground Parmesan, just like that. Oh, wow. oh, come on. Okay, you got it. You ready? Look at that. Oh, 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 oh shit. Whoa. Oh. Oh. This is delicious. Fresh basil over the top. Nice melty parmesan, and it's not over sauce. A lasagna made out of ice cream. We have a pound cake. So we're just going to cut these into slices and place them. Oh. Vanilla ice cream. I like oh. to just put a few scoops down. Oh. Spread this out. See, it's oh. nice and soft. We're gonna add a little bit of that sauce, pour it over oh. the ice cream. So just half of it, because we need it for another layer. There's chocolate rice puffs, and you're gonna make a generous nice. layer. Oh. And these guys, you are gonna use all of them up in this layer, because then after this, you're gonna just repeat the layer, and you're gonna do pound cake, ice cream, and sauce. Four to five hours in the freezer. Yeah. It's gotta set up. We got a block of white chocolate here, a cheese grater, and watch this. Just like you that. would the Parmigiano Reggiano. Hot water, just like you would a cake. We are going to cut into this baby. Look at that beautiful corner. Let it go here. That's a real, that was a There's big There's two robot. pops, right? You get the pot from the strawberry seed and the pot from the chocolate crisp corn cereal. It's a real bite right there. You get that nice, like, pound cake, and it has sucked up all of that strawberry flavor. It looks like a lasagna, but it tastes like heaven. All right, we are gonna make chicken pot pie in a mug. Let me show you what to do. You take that filling we just made there. Okay. Very easy to do. Rotisserie chicken, the frozen veggies, cream of chicken soup, and we're gonna fill our heat safe mug. Heat. You open up the tube of biscuit. Pop the tube, baby. Pop it up, and what do you do, Sonny? Can you guess? You lay, lay that right baby right on top like there. And you bake these in the oven at 350 for 10 minutes until it's golden brown. Oh my God, where's this? Again, spin? portable. Chicken pot pie in a mug. Cute little guys. Grab a thing, they're a little hot, so be careful. This is something I like to get when like, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. It is my Sunset Park noodle bowl. In my pan here, my pot really, I've just got some ground beef that I added some onions to, a little salt and pepper, and some red chili flakes. The fat and the juices from that meat is a nice start for a flavor base. I'm gonna start with gochujang. It's like a Korean finishing sauce. Add in some beef stock, a little the beer. Beers. So you're gonna stir this until it comes to a nice simmer. And that's when you're gonna drop in these Japanese curly noodles. Cover it up and let that simmer for about five more minutes. We all know how quick it is to really cook off those noodles. And here we go. Then over the top of that, a little bit of this beef. And then right over that, you know what I'm gonna do. Put an egg on it. Oh, oh I gotta put an egg on that, Sonny. You got a spat that. and hook me yeah, up. Yeah, I do. Look and get in there, I'm making... get in there. This is so good, I feel like I had a little bit of sickness. And it's gone now. Pineapple upside down pancakes. Yeah. We all know what this is. It's canned pineapple segment, mm -hmm. right? And all we're gonna do is kind of coat it in some brown sugar, just like that. And we got a nice hot griddle going. We'll put a little butter on there. Oh, I love butter. pancakes cooked in butter. It's, Crispy I think it's a must. edges. Yes. We're going to do the same and create that caramelization. We love it. So about five minutes after a nice caramelization on there, we add a cherry right in the middle of the pineapple. How cute is that? So cute. Your favorite uh, pancake batter recipe. And you pour it right on there, right? Can be right out of a box. And nope. it's going to sit on there, right? Nice medium heat until beautiful. it's beautiful this color. Let's check this. Mm. Can you see what this is? Oh, that's mm. beautiful. Look at there. Oh. Put it on a plate. Yes. There, no, buddy, butter me up. 
These pancakes, you really do get the flavor of a pineapple upside down cake. So you take a tie, cut it up, take a raw egg, roll it very tightly with the color side up, and then you, you put it in another piece of cotton or muslin or something like that or a tablecloth. You wrap it up really tight, get it really flush and tight. Then put it in water with three tablespoons of white vinegar. We're gonna bring it to a boil and let it simmer for 20 minutes. This actually works. You ready? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Hey, okay, there's six. the tie. There's the tie. We tied it again. Okay. Look at this. Oh, oh it's my God. That is gorgeous. Beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. And since it's beautiful. And since I have a lot of ties I want to get rid of, we can just make oh, it. You can do this all with stuff you have in your house, yeah. starting with an egg that has got a nice base coat of green. You can do red, you can do blue, but a nice base coat. You just don't want it white. Next, you're going to take a standard paper towel. Dip it in the white vinegar. You just want a little bit in there. Take a rubber band, get it on there. We're going to take those little bottles of dye. We're going to just give it a dab. I've never seen it done this way. And then we're going to take another cool. color and just keep repeating. And you could do three colors, four colors. Don't let this dry, right? You want to just take it off and then what you're left with. So I've got some rice here and we're going to add a couple of tablespoons into each one. And then we're going to add just six drops each of green food coloring and then six of the blue. Really important, you have to really, really move them around so it doesn't clump. So Very make sure the color is evenly distributed all over the rice, just like that. And then you add your egg into each one, and then cover it up. That's make it. sure you get that coloring all over. And you do that with the blue one, and then you swap them, and you shake it around, make sure it gets all over. And then you have robin oh. egg. Oh my god. Oh. This can get a little messy, so I suggest gloves for this one. So really easy, you take your hard boiled egg, take a little spoon and gently crack it. Then you put it into a plastic baggie and whatever color food dye you like, I'm gonna go with some purple and then put some water in with it. Tie it up, you wanna let this sit for a while. Cut it open, take it out. Then you're gonna peel it, very Ooh. gently peel it. And it comes oh, out very like nice. this. Okay. All right, everybody loves French toast, but this it's not a grab and go type breakfast, is it? Until now, because all you need. Until Jeff Morrow. One of these portable little what? to go coffee cups. I am making French toast to go. A quarter cup of milk, a tablespoon and a half of maple syrup, okay. the good stuff. Okay. Teaspoon of cinnamon. Let's see if this is carpool worthy. One. Egg. Yes. Eat it. One. We're going to wow. take this, we're going to whisk it in there until it's all uniform. Mm -hmm. Then you take a buttered piece of bread. Yes. Cut it into cubes like this. Turn it. Look at this, we're right? Making, we're making bread pudding. And this we're making bread pudding. goes right into that egg mixture. Okay. With okay. some chocolate chips if you want. Oh, oh decadent. Right? You can give this a little stir just to kind of soak it all in there, but yes. you want to keep those. All kind of dispersed the yeah, chocolate chips the in there. Comes all the way up to the Beautiful. Top. Now what you want to do is put it in the microwave for two minutes, but keep an eye on it because it rises. So you may need to stop it every thirty seconds while it calms down. This is and then I might this be is very what impressed. you have perfectly cooked, moist, chocolatey French toast to Look go. Look at that! Look at that! I'm making a chocolate covered strawberry tart with a surprise in the center. I've got a few cups of cream and a little bit of milk in here that I'm just heating up. I'm gonna add to it freeze dried strawberries. Just kind of let them steep. It takes about five minutes. Take it off the heat. Little white chocolate chips. So I just put in a whole bag, some vanilla extract, and then just stir this up, let it start to melt. So now it goes into the blender and then just turn it up. All right, I just made this out of chocolate wafers, sugar, and butter, ground it up, put it into a tart pan, and baked it for about 10 minutes. So now you just pour this filling in. How easy is this? So easy, and since there aren't any eggs Ugh. in this custard filling, you don't need to bake it. So this just goes into ah. the fridge. After it cools completely, you put it into the freezer for just 30 minutes. And then you're gonna use a whole bottle of chocolate shell sauce. So you just wanna let that set up. It's really starting to harden. I made some chocolate covered strawberries oh. and then I melted some white chocolate. So you just pipe this on, put them all Rotate the way around. around. like that. 
Now we're gonna take these fancy strawberries. Okay, and wow. And just put them around the center. Dip my knife in warm water. And oh, there it Ooh. goes. Mm. Look at that hard top. Mm, that looks Here good. we go. It's such a creamy strawberry. And the texture from that chocolatey crust. This is Feel awesome. Like Check this out. What is this? What is this? Look it that. is a foolproof way to get perfect hard not boiled, but hard ovened eggs, hard perhaps? Baked. Wow. Hard baked Roasted eggs. Egg. Check this out. You put them in the oven, put them in a muffin tin. You don't need water or anything. You think you need like a bain marie or something. You don't need any moisture. Put them in the muffin tin, 325 for 30 minutes. But then as soon as you take them out, you have to shock them. Put them in ice water just like this, these guys. And then you peel them and you get the perfect hard boiled egg. Shut the front I door. Can, Shut listen, in the pudding, when you cut it in half, if that yolk is perfectly cooked. Oh my oh god. My god. Yeah. No green Man, ring? Why is wow. no, no ring, nothing. Why is this not standard? What? Yeah. No, it's better what? now. And listen, what? if you're entertaining, if you're making deviled eggs, if you want them for breakfast, you can cook them in advance for the day, for the whole week, that you know, for kids. Awesome. It's just such a great idea. First time ever on the ever. kitchen. Oh. Brownie bowl. Oh, I'm so excited. So let's start with a bowl here. This is a great little kind of quick way to get that shape using the fudgy brownie recipe. You want to get, what, it's like a quarter of an inch thick. Take a, a round center about the, the size of the bottom, put that in there. Now we're going to take about four inch rectangular slices and put them in there, right? Slice it about 45 degrees through that till you get triangulation shape and you put them right in between where the squares were. So you just press it down. The edges are kind of flush with you the edges of the bowl. Some softened chocolate ice cream. And I'm just gonna put it in here and we're gonna sort of mold this, smoosh it around. See this? Oh, oh so you put plastic wrap around it. This is awesome. Jeff. Okay, okay in the freezer, three hours, and would you take out the other one, yes, please, I sir? Work. We're gonna unwrap it. It just comes right out. Wow. Look at that, like that. You ready for this? I have some hot fudge here. It's not piping hot, this, Ooh. and I like a lot of fudge. All right, so you spread this all around. I've got chocolate whipped cream. So this is just heavy cream, cocoa powder, and sugar. Plop that right in there. Oh, my God. Does this look good or what? Brownie bits. Ooh. Some walnuts, toss that together. So just right over the top. Oh, oh dear. Oh, my. Oh, goodness. Give it a nice press, OK? All right, so right over the top, right into the freezer. It's pretty heavy. OK, so. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. you did it. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Look at those layers. Ah, there we go. Catch that fudge. That brownie is so fudgy. A brownie with ice cream is just heaven to begin with. Then hot fudge and chocolate whipped cream. This is spectacular.